Hi, I'm Jim Ault. I'm the plant breeder here at Chicago Botanic Garden, and today we're taking a look at the hybrid Baptisia breeding program at the garden. Uh, what I'd like to show you here on Baptisia australis, which is a, a, a well-known species and in fact is Perennial Plant Association Plant of the Year this year, so you should all have it in your garden, is how I actually emasculate and pollinate these flowers. Now, I want to control the crosses between any two plants, so I select the seed parent in this case and a pollen parent, bring pollen from another plant. How do I keep the pollinators from doing this work for me? Well, in this case, the pollinators on Baptisia are bumblebees, and so I need to do something to discourage the bumblebees. The simplest way to do that is basically change the flower that the bumblebee doesn't recognize it anymore. And so I start pulling petals The banner, on. the two lateral sepals. Once I've done that, the bumblebee will no longer recognize that flower and bother it. And then to continue my work, I'll bend it down, the, the two petals that form what's called the keel, and I'll come in with a pair of tweezers and pull all the anthers out to make sure the flower doesn't self-pollinate. I can then bring pollen in from the plant that I'm interested in and put it all the way up there on that very small stigma and eventually that small pea pod like structure will make the uh, carpal with the seeds in it. And I'll push the, uh, the keel back up like that to protect that young carpal and I'm done. And this is Baptisia twilight that we're standing in front of. The last two plants we looked at, the species Australis, the species Sparrowcarp. When I crossed those two plants, I got this monster plant back. True hybrid vigor, hybrid between two species. Baptisia twilight was the first of our Baptisia introductions. Gets five feet tall by six feet wide. Beautiful shrub-like looking perennial uh, with these lovely violet flowers in the spring as we're seeing right now. This was our second selection or introduction, Baptisia starlight. Unfortunately, it's just about finished blooming now. Uh, a couple of attributes of this plant, it actually was very, just uh, very floriferous, covered in flowers two to three weeks ago. I intentionally made this cross to try to get an early blooming Baptisia out of it compared to some of the others we've been looking at. But you're getting a good idea of what this plant will look like this summer and uh, the remainder of the growing season with this lovely blue-green foliage and again, nice dense habit the rest of the season. And now we're looking at midnight. This is a more complex hybrid of three and possibly even four different species that I've combined together. Uh, a more ethereal open plant than the earlier ones that we looked at. And so kind of a, a garden designer's plant. You can come under this one with perennials much easier. Also, this one is, a, is one of the few in the marketplace that actually has a repeat bloom. We have these large primary inflorescences well out of the foliage, which is a great trait. And then as these lateral branches continue to elongate, they'll eventually make shorter inflorescences out, uh, kind of laterally born on the plant. That'll keep this plant in bloom for an extra week or two beyond its primary bloom period. This is Baptisia Solar Flare, one of our more recent introductions. Like Midnight, it's a complex hybrid, and actually a sister seedling of Midnight was the parent of this plant, uh, open pollinated, and I suspect it crossed with the Baptisia Sfera Carpa, which is sitting right next to it. And so again, we have these lovely upright inflorescences like midnight, yellow flowers. Uh, unusual though, as they age, if the night temperature is real low, they get a distinct violet, almost sometimes orange color, the yellow overlay. And then again, like midnight, this will also form smaller inflorescences that will continue the bloom season. So we get about three to four weeks of bloom out of this particular selection.